This is a video for English Language, Paper 2, Writers' Perspectives and Viewpoints, Question 2. This question involves synthesis between two texts, normally a summary of the differences between two texts. So we're going to have a look at question 2, first of all. And this is a walkthrough for that particular question. So for this question, you can see the question here looks like this. You now need to refer to source A and source B for this question. So I'm looking at source A and source B, and so I know I need to quote from both. The ways the boys spend their time playing as young children is different. So the idea is that the boys are playing, and it's different in these two sources. So that's my focus straight away. Use details from both sources to write a summary of the different activities the boy in source A enjoys and the boy in source B. B enjoyed when he was young. Okay, so it's about that idea of specific activities that were enjoyed by the boy in source A compared to the boy in source B. So I need to read that before I have my reading time on both sources because I need to know what I'm looking for. So I normally jot down at the top, these are the two sources just here, I normally jot down at the top what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for things enjoyed and specifically, I'm looking at activities. And as I read, I'm going to highlight those in source A. And I've already read this source, so I'm not going to waste any more time with actually reading it through in front of the camera, because I'm not sure that that's a helpful use of time. However, I am going to notice things like, it says here, um, he loves running up to people and waiting for them to twang his lips like a ruler on the table. When he gets tired, he barks gibberish in the middle of the room. He throws his entire body into it. Got the fact that he's a show off. We've got the fact that he's giddy and silly. We've got the idea that he gets tired and barks gibberish. So these ones in particular seem to be the area where we can see the things that he likes to do. A little bit further down here, we've also got this idea that he laughs uncontrollably whenever I say the word teeth for reasons I don't think I'll ever work out. So we're getting a sense already that this boy enjoys activities where he's being sociable. He enjoys interacting with others. We've got the idea that he likes being silly and playing games. But that his is very much an entertainment that's built with other people. Now if we look in the second text, we can see that that's very different. In the second text, we've got quotations such as... Okay, this mother is talking about her son and how he's grown up. And she's talking about how she used to see the sights of cut paper upon the floor, tumbled down card houses, of wooden sheep and cattle, of pop guns, bows and arrows, whips, tops and go-karts, uh, paste on the kitchen table so he enjoys crafts, chairs and tables turned the wrong way about so he likes making dens. A hearty shout, a shrill whistle. We've got at the top here, he had a habit of whistling and liked to ask questions. He was accompanied by a small black dog. Okay, so those are the things that the boy in source B enjoys. So he seems to enjoy the company of animals. He's an inquisitive child, he's often asking questions and thoughtful. He enjoys creative activities. We've got that he likes to make his own fun, so he plays independently. He likes to play with very traditional toys and play active games. We've got again this idea that this boy is quite adventurous. 
But unlike the boy in Source A, this boy seems to be quite uh, independent in the way that he plays, maybe less sociable and more independent. Okay, so what I now need to do is I now need to make some clear comparisons. So I'm going to make the comparison that in Source A, the boy is sociable, enjoys interacting with others, while in B, the boy plays more independently. I've also got the idea that in Source A, the boy enjoys being silly, a bit wild I suppose in the way that he's playing, whereas in Source B, the boy seems more adventurous and active, possibly more imaginative and less reliant on relatives to produce the fun. Okay, so those are all the comparisons that I really need here. Okay, my next job is to actually write up this answer, so I need to use quotes from both texts. I need to create statements of difference, what's different between the two boys, and I also need to make inferences. The more perceptive, the better, because I'm going to get more points for more interesting inferences and differences that I state. Okay, so first I start off by stating the difference. The boy in source, but in source A appears to be sociable but reliant on others in the way he plays. While the boy in source B is adventurous and independent. We're told that the boy in source A is described as being a show-off who enjoys running up to people. Notice how I'm embedding my quotes. Now I'm going to infer from that point. This suggests that the child delights in the attention of others and this is mostly the type of activity he engages in playing with relatives predominantly adults. Let's re-quote some detail. The word running shows the boys obvious excitement when in the company of others. On the other hand, so I now go for the other text, on the other hand, the boy in source B on the other hand, the boy in source B is active and enjoys a range of activities, although These are mostly enjoyed alone.
the writer recalls, so again I'm embedding my quote, the writer recalls, don't need a full stop there, the writer recalls, cut paper upon the floor, and paste spilt upon the table. This highlights, or this suggests, or this emphasises that the boy or the child enjoys, and I'm going to use the word activities again, enjoys creative activities that can be enjoyed independently at home. The words upon the table and on the floor show that he enjoyed relatively messy activities. Okay, and now I need a therefore sentence because I've done my analysis of source A and I've done my analysis of source B. I've said what's different about them at the beginning here, but now I'm going to just bookend that with another therefore sentence. And all I need to do now is just use the sentence therefore The boy in source A is more sociable, while the boy in source B is more independent. And then I can go on to my next comparison. Secondly, and I'm going to do that same thing again the exact same process. And I want to do that twice. If I can do that more than twice, brilliant, but actually twice is plenty. And we can see that for this question, the exam board only give us the remainder of that page. So realistically, in my handwriting, I could only do this twice. But I would be giving detailed statements of difference, and I would be giving detailed inferences, and I would be selecting a range of evidence from both texts.